all right how are you doing he's hoping that all is well with you it is our sincere apology for changing times just like that without definitely informing you on time but of course we have to have the show and it is definitely one on one and my name as always is eugene Anangwe. My guest today is none other than Peace Murunji and she's the Executive Secretary of the Rwanda Civil Society Platform. We had expected to host the Chairman of the Platform but of course uh, due to some reasons he wasn't able to make it on the program. So Peace, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Again. Yes, so very quickly I would like us to just by the end of the 30 minutes that we have at least we want to walk out of here at least understanding the mandate of the Civil Society Platform. What you do your mode of operation and probably ask a few questions here and there in the process of the show and so i'll start off with looking at the things that you do at the platform because several people have asked me to ask you this question what do they do what do they stand for who do they represent mm -hmm. how do they even do their job so let's start from there thank you so much that's a pleasure to me for me to have this today Mm. Uh, straight to the point, mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda Civil Society Platform is a platform for all other uh, civil society organizations of which uh, was established in 2004 mm -hmm. purposely for coordination of other CSOs in the country. So if I go back on how it is structured, it's a, mm -hmm. a platform with uh, 15 arm mm -hmm. and under these arm we have almost 600 CSOs. 600 under one umbrella. Um, what we call an arm are other platforms which bring together several organizations that intervene in the same sector. For instance, when we take example, we shall uh, talk about Profarm, which has more than 60 NGOs, but they all came together because they intervene in things to do with women promotion, mm -hmm. family promotion, children, women rights, whatever NGOs, mm -hmm. the NGO that intervene in that sector, mm -hmm. they come together under uh, Profarm. Also, when you talk of Glado, they also, the things to do with human rights and all that, they also come together and form that GLADO. So we have uh, so far 15, uh, but maybe what I can clarify on that is that there are some that are um, individual, not having other organizations under, just because they are, if I say unique, because of their uniqueness. Mm. If I take example of... Uh, organization like uh, Transparency Rwanda, it uh, intervenes in uh, corruption and when you look at it, it will belong everywhere and it will belong nowhere among others. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, uh, there is also one for Catholic Church, which we have, the, 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 the organization is Catholic, but they have uh, like representatives all over the country, mm -hmm. and they don't have other several organizations apart from the, these groups that are formed under that. But at least we count 15, and the under 15, there are uh, almost uh, 600 mm -hmm. NGOs. So why, and why uh, yes, y just finish up on that. Uh, how it operates. Uh, so far, we operate uh, through these 15 organizations, mm. but now what we are trying to strength uh, to strengthen that can work better, can mm. let this organization interact, network, and generally uh, meet their obligation or mandate is what we call systematic working groups, whereby among these other umbrellas, again we have what we call um, thematic working group is uh, we have now five. One is economic, economic justice, uh, just, uh, there is governance, human rights and gender. Then there is uh, social protection, there is capacity building, and lastly is 
international cooperation and the region integration. Okay. I, I wouldn't like you to probably lose some of uh, uh, the, the listeners probably, uh, but, but also I'm, I'm, I appreciate the extensive um, uh, explanation of, 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 of all the background information. But then some would wonder, do you do prefecting as, as a civil society platform of all these groups? Don't you feel that there are some groups that probably feel that the platform or the officials from the platform prefect us? They tell us what to do. They stop us from probably doing certain things, which we str we feel if we were operating individually in, instead of being under this group, mm -hmm. then we would have done even better or done differently mm -hmm. the things that we do. Do you do prefecting or what, what exactly is the need for having a platform? Yeah. where you have officials like you coming to speak on behalf of the platform. Yeah, thank you so much. In the first place, uh, we talked about the, the, the mandate for platform. Is that role of coordination? Then you talk of the capacity building for members. Mm. Then the key one is advocacy. Can't they do that on their own? Can't can they do capacity uh, building on their own? I Can't they represent can themselves? Yeah, you are right. Indeed, they do on their own. But if we take example of now trying to join ESC mm -hmm. it's because we have reasons why we have to be part of ESC. Mm. It's that uh, reason that they also have that thirsty. They need to have that uh, collaboration or working together. Because if you're one, you can't perform when you are many. Mm. And so it's upon their own willingness to come to belong to platform. Mm -hmm. the, the platform that does not f force anybody to belong there. Mm -hmm. So it's you to understand that you need to belong there, mm -hmm. then you join. So when you have to join, you have to be convinced and you understand why you have to be part of it. Mm -hmm. First of all, we are talking about the advocacy. With advocacy, if you go one and you talk about your issues, who will listen to you? But if you happen to go as a group, I think you'll be listened to. So what have you been able to so go with as a group today that you can point out and say we went with this as a group mm -hmm. and we were listened to? Or we are planning to go as a group on this and we hope to be listened to? Thank you so much. I think there are several, several examples that one can give regarding how you are listened to because you come together as a group. Uh, I'll take examples of several uh, advocates that we do. Mm -hmm but on behalf of members not just platform mm -hmm. as if i say just a house mm -hmm. whereby we bring together um, we network or coordinate the members they sit together identify what would be the issue or uh, something that is alarming then they make a choice of what they have to go for advocacy and from there they process whatever you need to go through to have it done in the first place, uh, we go through, th the process that we go through is a research based. You know that the evidence is there. Mm -hmm. When you go for advocacy, then you have evidence. You are able to convince. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, made several of them. I'll take example of um, uh, education last year. It was an education which was uh, a success story today. And uh, what the exactly recommendations what specifically now was there in the education? Yeah, we were the, the, the research was about, uh, was um, on um, quality of education. We are talking of this nine years basic education, which is now 12 in fact, of which it's a, a success to the other countries are coming to see how we manage to go through this with little resources. But we noticed that it was uh, again having some issues of which we have to, get to take care of as civil society, as the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. So we had to go to find out what is it exactly on the ground. Mm -hmm. So there were several issues. And uh, some of them, if I mention, included this dropout, though it was intended to help majority join school or increase the rollout. But we find that in the due course, there were several dropouts, especially girls who are having issues of pregnancy, early pregnancy, of which was alarming too, there was a very big problem of um, 
children walking a long, long distance to get to school without lunch, and so it would be hard for them to follow the class. Mm -hmm. There were several recommendations, but what I can assure you is that that time it was taken into account and it was taken among top priorities for the government to take care of these issues that were uh, brought to the table. To the time. table. And now they are being implemented. Mm -hmm. And we do follow up and see, ensure that they are being implemented. Mm -hmm. If they don't, then we go back and if set another alarm. Another avenue to, to, to deal with that. But then your your group, the civil society platform, has come under criticism from several people who have always said that, listen, um, we don't seem to understand what exactly uh, they, 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 they're supposed to be doing. We don't seem to see them uh, vocal on certain issues that we feel touch to our hearts. For example, you've mentioned the issue of the early pregnancies. Yeah. That seems to be talked about like right here mm -hmm. but then what is that that you did in in public we see other places they, they try to sort of compare how mm -hmm. other civil society groups work in other countries where they feel like people go out on the streets mm -hmm. they protest against early pregnancies and call for the police officers to bring to book mm -hmm. those who are impregnating these young children who are going to school mm -hmm. we, we don't seem to see that here yeah, thank you so much. Uh, perhaps it depends on the context that people are working in. It depends on um, the reason why they go on the street. Mm -hmm. For instance, if we happen to bring this on the table and the, the government listened, why should you again go back to break and, you know, it depends. But at least so far, um, these soft approaches are still working with our context. Mm -hmm. That's why you will not find several such acts because the, the government is able to listen. Perhaps the challenge is we don't have enough resources to make sure we go through these re, uh, research processes that are scientific to mm. bring the uh, recommendations that are, you know, tangible and reasonable to mm. convince the government. Mm. If we are able to do that, then the government listens, then we don't need to go to the streets. So if the government listens, you don't need to go to the streets. What if there is no proper collaboration between the government and, and, and some of the things that you recommend. Would you, would you go for that option? I think with, with our context, so far um, it happens because it has to happen. Mm -hmm. If need be, that would happen. If but need so be, you would find yourselves in the streets to protest. If you find that will be a solution for you, mm -hmm. then why not? So, so talking of, of, of the school dropouts, let's stick to practical examples. Mm. You have said that um, as you picked out some of the achievements or some of the things that you practically dealt with as, mm. as, as the civil society pl platform or in collaboration with the members of the, of, of the civil society mm. was to touch on the issues of even school dropouts and you pointed out especially young girls who are getting pregnant. Mm. Did we see any arrests or any follow-ups on some of those people because these girls didn't get themselves pregnant somebody yeah. must have done that mm -hmm. and and causing them to lose out on education mm -hmm. what happened and why didn't we see a lot of this being talked about even in the media thank you so much i think a lot happened not only in media even on the ground working on this mm -hmm. there were several uh, measures that were taken i think the the minister of gender and uh, family promotion mm -hmm. took lead of this. Not only that, even I think gender monitoring did a lot of other uh, things to do with it. Mm -hmm. But um, what I, I, I have to say about this is that it's only that it's not only the civil state alarm that alerted the, 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 the several actors to work upon it, but it was something that was alarming of which even Mm. was an, uh, if I say, incentive for us to even to go for that. Mm -hmm. So other actors were there, and they really worked on upon it, including the, 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 the laws in place, including other institutions that were there to, uh, to work upon it. So a lot happened, for sure. And I think even a lot is still going on. In fact, we were planning to work on... Um, another research related to that to find out 
um, the factors for such a pregnancy, if it is that long distance, if mm -hmm. it is only the, maybe the, 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 the hungry, the, the kid is hungry, mm -hmm. and anybody who will meet the girl around will just, uh, you know, cheat around. But then, uh, I think if you talk of media, again, maybe sometimes media also is somehow selective. So you find that there are those who are interested in certain sector and they are not bothered about that and you need like other institutions to bring this attention to you. Mm. So I would like to toss back the ball to you <laughs> as media that something can happen also on your side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it is um, something that is really alarming, you wouldn't wait for someone to come and knock. Mm -hmm. You can also help out to bring it on board. I would, I would have wanted to go deeper into that, uh, especially on, on, on the tossing of the ball, which I think really in the, in, the, in the course of the program, maybe we might be able to go back there. But then let me uh, uh, bring, you, bring your attention to uh, some information that we see on the website of the Rwanda Civil Society platform mm -hmm. that probably might justify mm -hmm. some of the concerns that some people have out there, especially when it comes to the working relations of the civil society platform and the government of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Some people who have a notion of that, that, that the civil society is supposed to be keeping the government in check. And therefore, they need to be always following and monitoring and always raising the red flag whenever government policy is put in place that mm. would not probably work well with the society. But when some people go to, a, to your website and see the kind of wording that is used, they tend to feel that you are in bed with the government. Mm. And therefore, you're not able to fully, you know, criticize or fully tell the government off on a policy that probably doesn't seem to be going to work well. Mm -hmm. or some recommendations that you might have that may work better. Mm -hmm. For example, I'll just read a, a line uh, in the about the RCSP where mm -hmm. it says, the recent and current performances of Rwandan government are the result of a well-coordinated effort in policy reforms and other record-breaking policy initiatives in various sectors, notably the macroeconomic management, the investment policy environment overhaul, the decentralization reform, and the gender equality enhancing across the public service. For some people, they'll feel like you are being groupy. Mm -hmm. You are praising. You're just, mm -hmm. wow. You know, <laughs> like, you're in bed with government. How do you get yourself off these kind of thoughts? <laughs> Thank you. I think uh, that's a very good criticism of which we have to take up. But again, I don't think it's like you, you, you said before, other civil societies, you know, they define it uh, as vibrant mm -hmm. because they break and kill and you know that's when it is uh, they say it is vi vibrant and mm -hmm. active mm -hmm. so i think being active does not only be inflicted through the breaking and killing mm -hmm. of course uh, maybe praising government is um in uh, is an in a through another angle that when we are there and we have to criticize we are not there just to criticize for the sake of criticizing. We have also to rejoice what is the good that we witness. Mm -hmm. And so such a phrases will come in. Mm. But again, when it comes to policy change, policy influencing, the example I was giving, mm. just this year we worked on agriculture. And the Minister of uh, Agriculture was there throughout the day listening to the battle from the public, from the house on the recommendations that were set on uh, that day. Mm. A year before, we worked on Mitwele um, Sante, this uh, medical insurance. Mm -hmm. It also worked that the recommendations were taken and even the, the, the policy was reviewed. And so from there, what else do you want mm -hmm. to go and, you know, break? So I think that's why uh, such a criticism will always come because they want to convey us with uh, our neighbors, consider like maybe in Burundi, mm -hmm. what is happening there. You know, they will not want us to be like them. Mm -hmm. But then I think we need to go that far because we are in the, in the, in the same box like where they are. Mm -hmm. So with, with um, the civil society to me, 
we are there to be more of partners, considering our own mission not to be the government, not to be part of government. We keep a distance, watch what is happening, and then you are able to tell. Because when you are in distance, then you are able to see what is going go wrong or right. Mm. So it is in that sense that um, people will always Want define the civil society mm. to be not active because they, they, they will not be involved in such. So because they have that definition, with that definition they have, they will always take that as a criticism. That's what I can say about and, and And, and would, would, would this distance because you say we always have to watch from a distance and then react or give our recommendations or opinion mm -hmm. how far is this distance when it comes to the arm of government mm -hmm. in spoon feeding mm -hmm. or financing the civil society platform do you get funding from government thank you so much um, that's another issue that is um, like ongoing today mm -hmm. if i say that if you get the, gov uh, the government fund, then you are diverted from your own... Do you get it? Yes, we do, because it, uh, it is the first uh, time I think it has not been there, but uh, I think the governance board is trying to work on that to support the civil society. Mm -hmm. As the regulator, there are certain uh, things that they want to work on to ensure that they regulate... Uh, the, the sector when it is uh, capacitated and in that sense it happened that they provided some fund for capacity building for CSOs. Mm -hmm. So we, the CSOs managed those who it was competitive, Yes. those who, are manage, who managed to have best projects received this fund. But I think this is also uh, that one of the role that uh, government should work on to ensure that they, they, they have the capacity and they keep in their mission, not just to divert because they want to run after, you know, sometimes they do it because they want to run after some, uh, you know, funds. Some fundings from government because that is, that is definitely... Even outside the government. Yes, that's even definitely... Outside the government because it's so because they want to, want to fulfill the agendas of those who fund them. In sometimes. most cases, sometimes. So, so how then do you convince someone who says you cannot bite a finger that feeds you in this particular uh, concept on in, or in this particular context? Because mm -hmm. your critics will always tell you that. That look, if, if, if Ministry of Local Government is listed as one of your partners, mm -hmm. then, uh, and, and, and probably you have a certain amount from the government's budget mm -hmm. to support the projects of the Rwanda Civil Society, they would definitely feel like you may not be able to bite that finger mm -hmm. any time that you are supposed to bite it. I think um, to my personal judgment on that is that suppose the finger is from another angle mm -hmm. and it is maybe tough and uh, needs demand is much more, mm -hmm. what would happen? It would work. So Pro yes, yes. I, I think it's a question of um, understanding and having that consent of keeping in your mission, mm -hmm. not because it is for the fund from government that you have to divert. Mm -hmm. You just ensure your mandate is, is this and you keep there. Otherwise, if it is that, then we would say that even the fund we get, because we only, in most cases, the, the, the biggest percentage, we get it from donors. Mm -hmm. So that would mean that even the rest, whatever we are doing, is donor-driven. Mm -hmm. So if it is not donor-driven and we're not bothered about this fund we get, mm -hmm. why are we bothered about the need to just a drop in a notion that is good from government? Mm -hmm. so I think it's not a question of where the money comes from. It's a question of understanding your mandate and you stick on it. That's what I can say. So we have several organizations that uh, seriously stick on their mandate. Even if you bring a big bunch of money, they not revert from their mandate. There are those who are there, you know, briefcase ones. They will always be ready. You are in health, but when they, they talk of environment, you are there. You are maybe in uh, gender mainstreaming, but when they talk about... Uh, Let's say, uh, what, something far away from that, you Human are there. Human rights or something. Whatever, you yes. are there. So because is, you this, is this a reality? Is this a reality? Do we have them? 
those that you're talking about, are they there? Yeah, we have. Uh, we, 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 they are there. They are there that will not be stable. And so, if I would be uh, in position to work on that, I, the, the government, in fact, would take care of that, strengthen these small CSOs, or maybe not small, but they are not stable. And so, so, so is someone failing on controlling that? Because if you say that this is the reality, it's not something that you're making up right now. Mm. That is, this is the reality that we have civil society organizations or, or organizations that call themselves civil society organizations. Mm. That if today we are looking for funding or there's some money somewhere or opportunity somewhere in they health, yet they are not there, they'll find themselves. They just jump over. So, so, so who's failing in in, in 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 regulating that kind of behavior? I think I will not point a finger to anybody that who is failing. Because um, I, I would take this as a, it's a process. It's a process. I don't think even these institutions that we have perform the same. There are those who do well. There are those that are weak. So if you meet the weak one, you not just say, oh, who is responsible? Instead, you rather take a step and say, how do I, how can we work on this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, this is, I think, more of um, the, 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 like the, the, the literal sources that, you know, it is, um, I w th there is something I wanted to say in my language, whereby when you have little, you fight for it. In most cases, when, they when you don't have enough resources, y you are not in good moods. Mm -hmm. You fight for the little. So th that's how such a things can happen, mm. whereby not because they are maybe, if I say the wrong word, they are to be greed or whatever, but just because they want to survive. So it's, it's justified. Are you trying to say it's justified? Whatever they do is justified. No, Hoping no, no. around just because no. they, they have seen a I financial say, opportunity. I can't say it is justified. Uh, yes, are you trying it's to It's not always that that when that. I'm hungry, I'll just pick pocket. Or yes. No, mm. it's not always. Mm. It will depend. Yes. But the reality is yes. when there is poverty, then the models will not be the mm. best mm. but mm. not that I, I want to support that uh, what they are doing is right mm. so it's it's just that um we need to look at it as a whole then we look at the strategies that we work we have to work on to ensure that civil society is strengthened and is able to meet its mandate mm -hmm. so yeah uh, as we as we near the end of uh, the program i would definitely love to understand we now are in the civil society week mm -hmm. and 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 for some people bro, this is, is is something that maybe they don't even understand why should we have civil society week who are they what are they doing during this week what's important about the week mm -hmm. and and what are they even telling us during this week that they cannot be telling us every day so w why are we having this particular week thank you so much we need to have this week because as you put it people do not, uh, it's like we need even public to understand who, what is this civil society? Why is it not vibrant? Why is it dormant? Is it really, you know, inactive? We want to show the public what it is exactly, understand the civil society has, and uh, that will be, we want to have that. Uh, visibility of civil society. Mm. So what will you be showing us? What will you be giving yeah. us during this week so to with be this visible? Week, with this week, I think uh, it started on Monday and we started with a press conference wha which was explaining what I was trying to mean. And uh, there are several other activities that are now already going on mm -hmm. so that we can be able to work on this uh, the, the, the image of civil society. Is it under government arm? Um, is it, you know, the whatever the comments that uh, are, um, uh, that, that, um, that you all yourself were mentioning mm. is what we intended to work on. Uh, and other uh, activities that we intend to work on, okay, of course, for instance, I, I will leave you with this pain mm -hmm. and it's part of this because it is uh, like trying to market a civil society. Mm. It's that uh, there are several things, including the the the, 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 the um, on on Saturday we shall have the um, expo, of which we'll have some items. Of course, not all, but just very few. 
we had uh, some interventions just to indicate, just a little, to indicate that we are able even to move from the advocacy and what have you, but we go yes. even in uh, some other activities like providing shelter for poor, and that happens and is still going on within this week. Mm. There is what we call um, governance uh, clinic, of which is now going on, whereby the, 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 the community is brought together with the leaders, then they talk. They discuss well, they some discuss of the things that affect them on the ground. Exactly. But we don't have to wait for the uh, civil society week to mm -hmm. do all this. No. I think you're right and it is not happening because we are within civil society. I told, I told you, we just picked few mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. that we already have. In fact, like what I'm telling you is not what we provided for within the week, but we just picked among the members, we told them like to pick sample of what they are doing mm -hmm. and do it within that week. Okay. But it's not just a separate uh, sub, uh, project that we're working on, no. Mm -hmm. It's just normal routine of the work the civil society is doing. So in conclusion as we go, do you agree with those who claim that uh, you are dormant? Do you agree with those who claim that probably they don't hear enough of you? Do you agree with those who feel like they're alone? We don't have a civil society uh, platform that is vibrant. And if you do not agree, probably what then are you going to do to at least have these people have some trust in the civil society? Thank you so much. I think the first step was this uh, this week and there was really to deal with such. Secondly is to do and keep in our mandate. Because in the first place, I don't agree with uh, the people who want to bring their definition to the civil society in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Let them keep their own definition mm -hmm. and let them let us also have our own definition of which will suit our own context. Mm -hmm. We should not we should not take it all and bring it because one size cannot fit all. They have their own issues of which will define the civil society in their own way. That's why we should have our own uh, definition mm -hmm. of which I don't agree completely with the the, the, the dominance that they are talking about. I don't agree with how they think that if the civil society gets the fund from government, then will be, you know, government oriented or driven. If it is that, then we shall be driven by anyone. Let's, I would just call upon the civil society to keep mastering and keep in their own uh, position or in their own mandate to ensure that the advocacy, the voice for the people is met. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and in addition to that, I would like to uh, invite the media to facilitate this activity to ensure that this week is really giving the fruits that we expected. And I think this can only happen if media gives its hand on and keeps like giving it all because we've been working on several things but if the media is not there to show it, then it will not make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right. So, as you've said, definitely that is where we'll end on that particular note, especially on the issue of definition. And uh, I want to thank you so much, Madam Peace Murunji, Executive uh, Secretary at the Rwanda Civil Society Platform. I'm hoping that we'll mm. have more uh, room and more discussions on these particular issues in the coming days. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. I appreciate Thank you. Okay. There you have it. One on one comes to an end on that particular note. Uh, keep your definitions to yourself. And of course, it is not a one size fits all situation. Those are the words from Murunji herself. And of course, we're hoping that you've picked a few things here and there from the discussion. Let's keep the conversation going. One on one RW, that's the hashtag to use. And follow us on Twitter at one on one RW. And keep in touch right here. My name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye for now.